Howdy, I'm Jason, and this is the 1973 Mustang we've been calling Large Marge. And today's video is a much more in-depth look at the install of the Willwood brake and clutch pedal assembly into this car. Now I'm gonna take you inside, show you the final, and then walk you back through the steps on how I got that in this car and how that would apply to almost any other car you'd want to install those into. All right, welcome to my office. It's coming together nicely. Now you can see I have all three pedals in here now. I went ahead and bought a low car after looking at a lot of different options. This low car pedal just seemed to have the best fit and feel for where I needed to hang off the dash or off of the firewall. Now, here, the important thing. First off, you were wondering why I would want to run and go through all this effort to put the Willwood pedals in here. Well, all I have to say about that is, look at those. <laughs> Come on, those are very sporty. They actually look and fit perfectly. You know, they just give you that absolute positive, I don't have to look down or I have to memorize the pedals. They're close together, they're tight. They have a ton of adjustability to make them uh, feel perfect to my feet. And if I want to, what I want to do a lot in this car is just a lot of sporty driving. I set this spread up custom to what I wanted here. So I wanted the brake pedal close, but not too close to the gas pedal so I could do heel toe downshift, which means you want to be able to hit the clutch, touch the brake, and then roll your foot over to the throttle pedal like this, blip the throttle, grab your lower gear, and downshift without hopping the back tires. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I now have this set up tailor-made to what I want, and that's awesome. Now, the pedals, as you can see here, mount in here beautifully and it's not just the fact that they just look amazing and are strong and very practical and have a ton of adjustability they also offer this very custom and high-end feel to the car so that's just one of many reasons why i went with these pedals you know it's personal preference plus practicality here so let's get down to the nitty-gritty of how i actually got this thing hung inside the car here First, what I did was pick a spot on the firewall that give me the basic parameters of the area I wanted it to be. Now that's where you want it to split the steering column. So you have the brake on this side and the clutch on the left side of the steering column. And then what I did was I just cut that out of the firewall. And so then I used this as a template, made a sheet metal piece to splice into there. And once I found that basic area on the firewall that I was gonna splice that sheet metal into, I used the Willwood firewall mounting kit. Now that's a part number 25013167 out of the Willwood catalog. And that piece is key to making this pretty easy. So what I did was I figured out where those parts mounted on that, on that billet piece of aluminum there, measured that up on the firewall, spliced the piece of metal in, I cut one hole for that mount, and then drilled the holes that run these that the bolts run through and then that was it the pedals will actually mount to the billet aluminum piece and all of the master cylinders on the outside of the firewall mount as well to the back of that so it just made it very simple and easy for me now the other thing that you'll have to do on these cars you have this giant chunk of steel here that used to go in and actually mount the brake pedal to this car and the master cylinder to the firewall so you're removing this thing to make room for all this but what you'll need to do is you can't just have that sheet metal plate on the wall support all of this this is going to take a lot of abuse over the years and hard stops and lots you know hopefully not a lot of panic stops but a lot of hard braking and and vigorous use so what you have to do is you have to figure out a way to make this kind of support and here's where you get a little bit creative if this were a race car, you would tie this into your roll cage, which would have a stringer going across here and bars everywhere. This car probably isn't going to get a full cage like that. So I had to improvise. So what I ended up doing was double plating the cowl, this piece of sheet metal here, that I was going to run all of my stringers or my support stringers from the brake and clutch pedal assembly up to here. So you plate this like you would a roll cage on a sheet metal floor. And then I made these little stringers and this little mounting plate here that run up to all of my double plating here. Now, I, yes, I overbuilt that a bit. I figured that was safer to do than underbuild it and always wondering if it was going to hold. 
I'm pretty confident that's not going anywhere. It is extremely solid and I like that install. Okay, so now I want to address a couple of the questions that were brought up in the last video I did when I bent up the nickel copper lines and installed them into this car. Now a few of you guys were concerned about the single flare and dash three fittings that I used on all of the unions in here. Now I've got tens of thousands of safe miles on those fittings on cars that I've built in the past. So I haven't really had a problem with that. Now, do I recommend that for a new builder? Absolutely not. Mild steel with an inverted or double flare is definitely the safest and easiest way to go. So it's personal preference. This has worked for me in the past and this is what I'm sticking with now. And it looks really cool. So, and it's something that I have some experience with. I'll keep an eye on these things. It's not like this car is just gonna get plopped in as a daily driver and just forgotten about. So this will end up being a very manageable system in this car. Keep checking back. You'll see over the life of this car. I'll keep making videos. We'll all find out together. But now, another question was about proportioning valve. Now that's a pretty good observation when you saw all this stuff going in. Now normal cars or usually you would see in a car a master cylinder that looks similar to this. Now this is just the Wilwood tandem master cylinder because obviously I'm a Wilwood fanboy but um, normally you'd have a booster here if you had a power brake car and this master cylinder and then you would have your front and rear brake systems coming out of that. And then what you would have to do is plumb in a proportioning valve like this one which would dial down the pressure to whichever front or rear system. I usually install these onto the rear of a car because I want full pressure to the front and then I could modulate tire lock from there and dial down the pressure to the rear to get me the balance that I desire. Now the wheel would brake and pedal assembly actually runs off of two discrete master cylinders with a balance bar that runs right off of the pedal underneath the dash that you can adjust on the fly to give the front or rear master cylinder more leverage and you dial in the proportioning from there. Instead of turning down the pressure, you just adjust that bar to give you more or less pressure to the master cylinder driving the front brake system or the rear brake system. So I hope that answers your questions about the brake system that went into this car and answers some questions in general about braking systems. Now next up we have some steering, rack and pinion finish up and those videos are coming down the line so keep checking back for more and until next time, enjoy your drive.